This demo shows processing steps for DJI L1 LiDAR point cloud. Dataset is collected in Luosto, a small ski resort in northern Finland. I have started Spatix. I have TerraScan and Modeler running. I start new drone project. First I give a name to the project. Then I specify the input LAS file, the point cloud, which DJI Terra software has written. Software recognizes the coordinate system. And I specify trajectory input. This is an SPET out file DJI Terra software has created. I need to specify the projection system in which I want to work. I type in a keyword. It locates the Finnish Gauss Kruger 27 zone. And I select a geoid model. So the software will transform data from ellipsoidal to orthometric elevations. So the software reads the point cloud in, transforms the coordinates, sorts the points, converts elevations, assigns color to black points, and imports the trajectory information. So I have the data imported 211 million points. I want to look at the data, get familiar with it, see if there are any issues, anything I need to handle, anything special in the data set. I zoom in a little bit. I rotate the view to get a 3D understanding of how everything is looking. Colors are a bit dark. I choose view color histograms to check what does the histogram look like. And yes, the colors are dark. So I decide to modify the colors to make everything brighter. I use 50%. And that makes the data set look nicer. It's often a good idea to look at a cross section that covers the whole data set. This shows if there are any points in the air, any points way below the ground, any noise. If there's a couple of noise points, that not, that's not a big issue. Here it looks like we have something that is causing thousands of points way below the ground. So I use a manual classification tool, classify below line, to classify some of those. Now they are in low point class. I can then, in view number one, hide all the other classes and just look at low point class. And I can see that all the low points are concentrated in one area. Something to do with the buildings here. So there's buildings which have glass structures, igloos for tourists to sleep in. And any glass structure causes trouble for LiDAR systems. We get bad data. When it's thousands of points at the same location, it's best to manually classify those out. So I'll look at the location in cross sections and classify points below a line in the cross section. And I move the cross section with move section forward so that I look at every spot along the area where I have these buildings with glass structures. And looks like I've probably captured all of the points. I go to delete by point class and I delete 14,654 points, which were way below the ground. The import step 
brought in trajectories as well. I'll just check there is one trajectory brought in and it's in the right location. So everything is in order. I want to split the trajectory. So I start the wizard process drone data. For the purposes of the demo, I do one step at a time so that you get an understanding of what happens during each step. Trajectories have been split. I draw those into the design file. So now I have individual passes over the site separated as their own trajectories. <coughs> the split trajectory step also assigned line numbers to the points. So I can use a display mode, color by line, and see how much the lines overlap. And I can in a cross section check if there are any mismatches between the flight passes. DJI Terra software has done matching, and I want to check that that look is good. I have a cyan and magenta pass here. They are matching pretty nicely in the flat place. Here I start seeing some difference, and then I see a yellow flight pass, which has more point-to-point -point noise. It's the edge of this scan corridor. Next, I'm going to run cut overlap. This keeps only one flight pass at each location, removing the edges of the scan corridor. This removes the noisier data and keeps the better, better matching data. And now my data set is smaller. About 100 million points have been removed and it's more accurate, looks better. Next step in the wizard is smoothing. I zoom into a location where we see asphalt in gray and some grass next to the asphalt area. Smoothen and remove step in the wizard can recognize vegetation using color information. And it can run in a way that it modifies the X, Y, Z of only those points which are not in a green neighborhood. So the grass points hits on trees, stay the same, and it is the non-green surfaces which are modified to, if that produces a smoother, nicer surface. So the asphalt, roads, and the building roofs start looking nicer. Next, I will do thinning and ground classification. Thinning is optional. It speeds the process up. Instead of using every point in the classification, the software will use a subset of the points, which makes the software run faster. When ground classification is complete, I want to check the classification. That's the points classified as ground. And I want to do a, uh, and there's a 100 million points put into the inactive class. So only 12 million points are now actively used to decide what is ground and at a later stage to decide what are trees, building roofs, and so on. I organize view windows, and then I create an editable model. This is in Terra Modeler. It's a triangulated model, which I use to check the ground classification and do manual editing on ground classification to get the best possible ground model. I display the ground surface as a shaded surface in view number one. I synchronize views so that view number one and view number two show the same location. 
in view number two, I look at points with color, so I understand what I'm looking at. If in the shaded surface display, I see something that catches my eye, anything that looks strange in the surface. View number two is showing the same location, and I get an understanding that there's something happening in the place where I have a building. The ground rises next to the building wall, and I don't think that's right. I want to classify those ground points out to a low vegetation class, and I use classify above line. This updates the shaded surface immediately. And then I can look for anything else that catches my eye as looking strange in the ground model. I see a pile of sand or gravel. It's a temporary pile, most likely, so I decide to take it out of the ground model. This way I would continue and keep improving the ground classification as long as I spot anything that doesn't look right. So I have now completed the check ground step and now I proceed to classifying above ground features. And because I've done thinning and noise removal, we do want to copy the classification result to those classes as well. So at the end, almost all the points get a point class assigned. So now the software has classified above ground features. And my next step is to look at that result. What has been classified as building roof? What has been classified as tree and so on? Now I close the tin model. I don't need that anymore. I organize view windows. Again, as now I'm happy with just two view windows. And first I look at the ground. So that's the points classified as ground. In view number two, I look at ground only and co color by class. And then I take a cross section. I'll make it 25 centimeters on both sides. And, and oops, I, I still have to synchronize views on. I'll go and switch that off. I return to a top view in view number one, fit the view to see all the points. And now in the cross section view, I get some understanding of how does the ground classification look like. Then I take a quick look at the building classification. So this is building roofs. And I draw a cross section. So just as an illustration of what has been classified as building, building roof. One class which has a lot of points in it is tree. There's a number of trees in this site. I make trees visible in the cross-section view as well. The cross-section is fairly thin. So I'll make it a little wider, one meter on both sides of the center line. And then the trees start to have some real shape. Some points have been classified as car. Now I switch different classes on. So there's roof structure, wall structure, which are stuff next to building roofs. And there's a vegetation class, which is the not so high vegetation. So not tall enough to be a tree, but something else. And some of the other stuff ends up in the vegetation class. It's not always all vegetation. So we have checked the classification, 
And of course, I could continue with manual classification to improve the classification result. Now I'm looking at intensity coloring. And I'm just looking at, I have signal markers, and those are visible in the data set. I decided that I want to draw the GPS surveyed locations of the signal markers into the design file. So first I save the point cloud so that I can close it and I can read the control measurements or the fix measurements. I have a text file, which is point number, easting, northing elevation, seven points. I read those in. I change the active color. My active line weight is four. I use write to design file with active symbology. So I get the seven control point locations as vectors in my vector file. I close the points and then I read the laser point cloud back in. This gives me the chance to see the control measurements and the laser point cloud at the same time. So I can see how well things are matching in XY, how well things are matching in elevation. I take a cross section from a signal marker And I can see that in elevation, we seem to be off. Looks like the laser data is too high. In X, Y, things are looking pretty good, but we are clearly too high in elevation. I create a definition of the signal marker. You can use different shapes. A checkboard pattern uh, is easiest to add and it's the most common type used. In here, it's 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters in size. I use output control report to compare the control measurements against the signal markers as they appear in the point cloud using intensity. So the software reads the X, Y, Z coordinates surveyed with a GPS and tries to find the signal marker from the point cloud. It gives me mismatches. DX, DY values are pretty small. I check every signal marker so that I'm happy with the location, the rotation that the software has found for the signal marker. The last one doesn't look so good to me, so I get get the feeling that maybe the rotation needs to be and the location different. Rotation I give as a key in angle. Then I try to pinpoint where I believe that the signal marker spot is in the laser data. I click. XY comes from mouse, mouse click. Elevation is computed by the software. Now I will look at how big are my mismatch distances in easting, 3-4 cm level, the same in northing. In elevation we are 50 cm level, so there's a systematic shift that needs to be applied. So I, I apply an XYZ shift, which moves the data with one constant shift for easting, one constant shift for northing, one for elevation. My elevation mis residual mismatches are below two centimeters. My easting and northing are three, four centimeter level. Then I'll save the points as the final point cloud. Now it's classified and adjusted to match the control with a systematic one X, Y, Z shift. Thank you for watching.